Now today I would be dealing up a topic which happens to be examiner's favorite, a question which has been asked many a times and a question which is expected ahead as well. Now as far as hematology or hemato-oncology or general medicine is concerned, I have been seeing that this question has been asked many times and here I would be taking up very important facts about this topic which is the hairy cell leukemia. Now there are various important points which you need to know about hairy cell leukemia and what are these points which you have to take care of. So first of all you have to remember that hairy cell leukemia in itself is a misnomer because it is not a type of leukemia. It is a type of lymphoma and what type of lymphoma? It is a B cell type of lymphoma and important is that it is not of a common occurrence. It is a very uncommon type of a hematological malignancy but it is commonly asked in examinations so that is why we are dealing with it over here. Very frequently asked and it is an indolent type of a lymphoma. So these are some of the important points about hairy cell leukemia. Now, so special concentration needed for this type of a leukemia, which is basically a misnomer. Now, it affects usually the elderly age, more than 40 years of age, and it is usually common in case of males. The males are preferred four times more than the females. So that is very important. And what is important is that there is one thing which you have to remember, spleen, enlargement of the spleen and splenomegaly. This is one clinical condition in which a patient might present with massive splenomegaly. Splenic enlargement or splenomegaly is a feature of many clinical conditions. We have got various types of hematological malignancies, CML associated with splenomegaly. We have got portal hypertension associated with splenomegaly. We have got syphilis sometimes associated with splenomegaly. We have got a disease entity called as Kala Azar associated with splenomegaly. We have got tuberculosis associated with splenomegaly and we have got malaria associated with splenomegaly in addition to tropical splenomegaly syndrome. So many multiple conditions can cause splenic enlargement but this is one clinical condition which is associated with massive splenic enlargement and important thing is that it is also associated with pancytopenia and in some cases associated with lymphadenopathy. So what is very important is massive splenomegaly. It is given as a clinical scenario case, a patient of 50 years, say for an example, 50 years presence with a hypochondric tenderness and a mass within the left hypochondrium and associated with recurrent infections and associated with pancytopenia. And what are the other things which may be associated with it? Trap, positivity, hairy cells, pathologically, and so many features. So you have to remember basically massive splenomegaly as a part of hairy cell leukemia. Now, how does a patient present? So in addition to splenomegaly, massive in a typical case and anemia, leukopenia and thrombocytopenia. So the patient will be having pallor, the patient will be having recurrent and repeated infections, very important and patient may be having bleeding problems. So association of massive splenomegaly with pancytopenia is a classic feature of hairy cell leukemia with or without lymph adenopathy. The lymph nodes may be or may not be involved. But classically, two things, massive splenomegaly and pancytopenia. So that's important. Now, trap positivity. There are very few 
malignancies which are associated with trap positivity and hcl is one important malignancy which is associated with trap positive so tartarate resistant acid phosphatase activity is present in these neoplastic b cells which are responsible for causing hcl now immunophenotyping happens to be a very important diagnostic modality of diagnosing certain important malignancies especially the hematological malignancies and hcl is one clinical entity in which phenotyping immunophenotyping is of much significance and you will be having cd 1920 and 11 and pca plasma cell associated antigen expressed in these cells so that is very important and you have to remember these cluster designations series that's important in addition to cd25 and il2 which i have just mentioned in addition to the other cluster designations now as i mentioned at the onset that it is a misnomer this is basically an indolent type of a b cell non-hodgkin's lymphoma and males are affected predominantly and what's important there are the presence of hairy cells in the pbf and what's also important you have oval to irregular nuclear contours abundant cytoplasm and distinct cell borders within the cells of the hairy cell leukemia so that's important now what does the lab the blood values show as i mentioned you all the lineages may be affected pancytopenia with atypical lymphoid cells and this is very important image based question this shows the two hairy cells over here the blue cells and if you have a look at the figure i will just enlarge it for you per your purpose and you can see that there are the peripheral cytoplasmic projections from these cells over here and this is what gives the cells a hairy appearance so this is a classic hairy cell which is seen in case of hairy cell leukemia that is very important so hairy cells with hair like projections and there is anisocytosis and nuclear of different sizes and shapes that's important so this is how a hairy cell leukemia may be asked in the form of an image based question now once we do a bone marrow aspiration the bone marrow aspiration may usually reveal a dry tap you will not get anything out of the aspiration and in addition there may be honeycombing of the uh, of the cells the cancer cells which are infiltrated may be present with honeycombing and what you can have a classical what is frequently asked is the fried egg appearance of the leukemic cells so you have to remember that the cells give a halo or a fried egg appearance now this is a splenic section of a patient presenting with hairy cell leukemia and the cells show a monotonous or a homogeneous pattern that is shown over here medium-sized cells with clear cytoplasm and interlocking cell borders giving a hairy cell i mean to say fried egg appearance in case of hcl so that is very important now as i previously mentioned immunophenotyping is important and you have to remember you have to very uh, it should be memorized cd19 cd20 cd11 c cd25 and cd103 they are important phenotyping markers of hcl now presence of trap positivity as i mentioned so classically to sum up hairy cell leukemia happens to be a type of a lymphoma not a leukemia rare in occurs b cell type of a non hodgkins lymphoma uncommon indolent present with recurrent infections pancytopenia in the form of anemia leukocytopenia and thrombocytopenia and leukocytes count will be reduced and that will predispose a patient to recurrent infections which may be a presenting feature and you have to remember other features like lymph node enlargement which can be associated and the immunotypic markers which you have to in addition you have to remember that there are these two drugs which will take in the pharmacological section but here you have to remember as a passing reference cladrobine and pentostatin they are the two drugs which are effective in the treatment of hairy cell leukemia
fried egg appearance, hairy cells, triapositivity, and effective treatment by cladribine and pentostatin. Because you can get a question about hairy cell leukemia in various forms, say a malignancy, a hematological malignancy with massive splenomegaly and triapositivity, well treated by pentostatin. What is the answer? HCL. So again, a clinical scenario of patient, 45 year old patient presenting with a mass within the left hypochondrium in addition to having recurrent chest infections, in addition to having immunophenotypic markers, having CD19 and CD20 positivity. So what will be the diagnosis most likely? So you have to remember these points and by virtue of remembering these points, you will come or arrive at the diagnosis and answer this question correct. Thanks a lot.